inside they hit somebody a in prison you know how long you'll be there for b you know what your crime is prison better mm. because you you know uh, when happened but here i don't when happened <laughs> Napier Military Barracks in Folkestone in Kent has taken on new purpose in recent months. Once used to house army personnel, they've now been turned into an assessment and dispersal facility that houses around 400 asylum seekers, all men, some of which have journeyed across the English Channel. The barracks have been in service since September and could remain open for up to 12 months. Asylum seekers here are waiting for a response about their application to stay in the UK and have been told they will only be in the barracks for 30 days. The government is obliged to find accommodation for asylum seekers while their claims are being processed, but the COVID-19 pandemic has left them desperate to find enough housing. So we've just arrived here at Napier Barracks and just as we got here, a man came out of his window and he started screaming help, help. So he pointed and gestured over here. We came over here and the security man prevented him from speaking to us. Why won't you let them speak to us? If they want to speak to us, they can speak to us. security say no, you can't see. I need to talk, but the security say no. We do know that the tension seemed to be escalating every single day. We've just heard from one guy saying that there's a suicide attempt every single night. So it really does feel like tensions are getting a lot more heated. And right now, it, it seems like it's unfolding right now. The security guard has asked for backup already. And we've only just been here for a few minutes. The security here doesn't let us talk with the security guard. I don't know why. As far as we're aware, they're allowed to go in and out of the facility throughout the entire day. The curfew is at 10 p.m. So we're trying to figure out why the security guards are not letting them come out and speak to us. Why are you ignoring us? Is there something you've got to hide? As they've gestured us to come around and speak to them again, the security man, the same security man, has now stopped them from doing so. They're making it absolutely impossible for these asylum seekers to get their voice across to anybody outside here. The Home Office introduced a gagging clause underpinned by the Official Secrets Act in the form of a confidentiality waiver, essentially silencing visitors from speaking out about what they see inside the barracks. It was clear we weren't going to be able to speak to anyone inside, but we spoke to 24-year-old Abdul in a park nearby. He requested to keep his face concealed to protect his identity. Now I don't know how many times I can stay there on the in the inside it's not like normal life you know so i have a problem with clothes or shoes with feet when i understand it's here like that maybe i stay in iraq really really it's like prison it's uh, like one block and there are 15 people like 20 people in the one room and sleep in one room together you know for night it's too much problem too many people now now have a corona also yeah like that someone say home office don't uh, don't want us people speak to media it's a dictator yeah. like uh, Iraqian politics like Syrian politics like that Abdul has been sent back to the barracks after being hospitalized for self-harm you know he's got fresh scars all the way up his arm and it just makes you think what's it like in there you know, he risks his life to be here in the United Kingdom, supposedly a safe place, but it's the barracks that tipped him over the edge. It's not just Abdul painting a bleak tale of life in the barracks. There have been reports of protests and hunger strikes against the conditions. We've also heard allegations of rampant self-harm, cramped rooms of up to 30 men with no social distancing, sharing one bathroom, poor hygiene and bed bugs. I, 
I don't believe what I say, but because the people is very tired of this uh, place. The display is very difficult. This way the people will take kill his sip, this way. 28 people, they have only one uh, toilet. Yeah. If I need, the, the toilet inside is very bad. If you need to take shower, you have to be go, out, go outside, and you know it's very cold. Reason better, mm. because you you know when happen. But here, I don't when happen. I have problem heart. Yeah, I'm sick. Every people, every, no only me. There's something wrong inside. Adam Yassir, who is himself a refugee from Darfur in Sudan, has taken on their cause. He delivers essential goods like clothing to asylum seekers across the country, as well as offering legal support. He's been stopped from distributing donations in Napier barracks. Why wouldn't you let Adam in to give donations? Not going to speak to me? No. Now they're completely refusing to answer my questions. All I was asking is, why can't Adam go in and deliver donations? Adam has no other choice but to set up his donations in the park opposite the barracks. As we were helping Adam distribute clothes, we were confronted by police citing an incident. We've been called here for this particular uh, incident. Incident? Where, they've been called an incident. Who's, yeah, okay, been, so this is now an incident. This is why Kent Police are here. We, we refer to anything you go to as an incident. So the last time you've been called... Guys, and... guys, guys, we don't need to make this more complicated than it is. I think we need to clarify anything with you and we'll come back. Yeah, okay. please let us know. Was it like a phone call of some guy giving some clothes to asylum seekers? That's... I'm, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to go into details to as to how we've ended up here. But, well, but you, you, you've one. come to respond to an incident? Something which is Kent Police have been called about, yes. Right. Maybe in given asylum seekers clothes. That's, That's put words into it. This encounter is a regular occurrence for Adam. Okay. He's been coming to the barracks for the past two months, but faces barriers from security and police. The Home Office won't allow asylum seekers to get essential such as brand new socks, underwear and, and basic things that they need. Um, they made it extremely hostile, extremely difficult for them to get the stuff that they need inside. Um, and, and I had the police being called on me twice now. Um, I actually known one of the officers who spoke to me last time for about half an hour trying to say like you need to leave and, and, and I, I guess I, I, find, I find it really shockingly disgusting knowing the camp management. I know they are private contractors but it's, it is the Home Office because I've complained to the Home Office about the issue knowing that last time they've literally pre prevented them from coming out. We've seen people collecting donations but it's not as simple as walking in the facility with the donations is it? Certainly not. It is it is, um, so I not just being prevented from coming out and getting the staff at some, at some occasion. They try to go inside, the security compensated from them. Um, and I try to text management and say, look, could you please give the staff to asylum seekers? And the reason being is COVID. It is just dehumanizing, dehumanizing vulnerable people who flee prosecution, flee similar situation to, to come to the UK and be shocked to, to be put in a such, I, I don't get what the home of his policy in terms of whether this is actually adequate, if it's broken system, admittedly, then are we fixing it now or are we making it worse? The Home Office Director says these people here are seeking protection. They're not criminals and they're not being detained. But by the looks of it, I mean, there's barbed wire for a start and a sealed off guarded fence. It seems like the complete opposite. The use of Napier Barracks has been criticised by the Shadow Home Office Secretary, Nick Thomas Simmons, as well as Yvette Cooper, the chair of the Commons Home Affairs Select Committee. Users of asylum accommodation are often very vulnerable people including torture survivors and individuals suffering post-traumatic stress disorder. Reports of self-harm and suicide attempts are extremely distressing and reiterate the need for residents to be able to easily and safely discuss concerns about their physical and mental health with support specialists and trained volunteers. But the Home Office refutes these claims entirely. We rejected these claims entirely. This characterization is wrong. Asylum seekers at Napier Barracks are staying in safe,
COVID compliant conditions in line with the law and social distancing requirements. We are determined to fix our broken asylum system. An asylum system should provide a safe haven to those fleeing persecution, oppression or tyranny. We take the well-being of asylum seekers extremely seriously and have taken every effort to ensure that the sites operate safely, securely and taking account of public health guidance. Without much warning, the Home Office set up the facility in the seaside town of Folkestone. Local MP Damien Collins wrote to the government demanding more clarity on how makeshift barracks would be run and claimed they'd been kept in the dark about it. He also said that his constituents raised concerns over the plans. We heard from local mothers who say that the influx of over 400 single men in their small town makes them feel uneasy. I actually live in the what used to be the army barracks. We live there. Um, so we feel kind of a little bit unsafe, I guess. Um, I'm not sure if they have anyone sort of checking on them and things like that. I know they're allowed to just sort of wander around. But I mean, they've got everybody to be here as much as anyone. If I have to step to my child from the nursery that's just there. <laughs> And with them all gathering there, they make you feel really uncomfortable. They all shout stuff in their own language. You don't know what they're shouting to you. Obviously with my son as well, with the nursery being there. But some of the local pushback has been more hostile. Right-wing activists have hosted a protest outside the barracks, and there's been anti-migrant sentiment shared on social media against the presence of asylum seekers in Folkestone. Well, I served 21 years in the regular and reserve army. And I've stayed in a lot of barracks like this, and I don't think that my mental or physical health suffered a great deal for it. But here, they've got shelter, they've got warmth, they've got food, they've got clean water, they've got all the support that they need. And I think the idea that barracks like this, which actually could be used to house ex-servicemen, are being used to house people who come to Britain illegally, is something that makes people pretty upset. And some locals we spoke to said they weren't keen on the barracks being repurposed to house asylum seekers. There's no good, mate. They need to control it. Put them somewhere else or send them back. If you, if you wanted to go somewhere to better for your family's life, you're going to do it. But if you're coming over here raping girls and doing other things like committing that, crime. committing crimes, it's no good, Or is just punching off the social or whatever. Yeah. Can you not sympathise with them to an extent? No, because they're not actually they're not actually being proper human bit like say when they're going over and starting with old ladies in Tesco's or if they're rioting over here with a mobile phone, rioting, videoing each other, actually arguing, they shouldn't be doing it. They shouldn't be doing it. If they don't like it, go go back to where you come from, wouldn't it? You've only got to look on um uh Facebook and things like that, you can see some people are, are completely anti uh, uh, immigrants and that's it, and uh, asylum seekers rather. And so whatever, happen, whatever happens, they're always going to be against it. So yeah, but it's probably 50-50, there's just many people who support it, but I personally haven't got a problem. No. While we were speaking to a group of asylum seekers outside the barracks, we witnessed some of this intimidation ourselves. One people in here in Folkestone, I have heard this, fuck you. I was just speaking to some more people about life in and around Napier Barracks and they told me that quite often they're harassed by the locals. Even as we were speaking a car went past and was revving their engines shouting and jeering at us and while curfew is still just a few hours away the vibe around here after dark is really quite scary. Only I dream I think which day I can going to be free. For many fleeing tyranny and persecution, the UK is a far-off beacon of hope, a country supposedly run on principles of freedom and fair play. But for those who ended up at Napier Barracks, their glimpse of the UK doesn't seem to be far off from the dire circumstances they've escaped. As pressure mounts to close the barracks, the Home Office stands in denial of all these allegations. But one word echoed, prison. In fact, we heard it from nearly every single asylum seeker we spoke to. But in prison, you know what you're in for. In prison, you know when you'll get out.